Through God's ear, there's nothing small about your business, your passion, your hours, your reputation. It's all huge. Your partnerships, even bigger. With Dell Small Business Technology Advisors, you'll get the tech, advice, and one-on-one partnership to help your business grow. Because with reliable Dell PCs with Intel Core processors, you can focus on what matters most, getting business done. Call 877-BY-DELL to speak with an advisor today. That's 877-BY-DELL. This is the Dan Levator Show with the Stugats Podcast. We got to take some air out of this tire. Whenever Stugats gets a couple of days off, all of a sudden oh. his absence from around a microphone makes him crazier than he even normally is. <laughs> Weekend observations are in, ready to go. You're going to hear him in about 15 minutes. Why are they in and ready to go? Because Stu Gatz had two more days to spend with his wife. And so all of a sudden he decides to work when he's home and he decides to argue with his wife when he's here. Anyway, so he comes off vacation, Mike, and I'm not kidding you. Right before you turned on these microphones, Stu Gatz was snarling at his computer. And what he was sm- snarling at his computer was, what did Ben McAdoo say about Sam Darnold? I mean, Ben McAdoo, I'm serious, man. Like, I can't believe I still live in a world where I care about what Ben McAdoo says about my quarterback, Sam Darnold, but I do. I live in that world. And what Ben McAdoo, who is no longer coaching in the NFL, by the way, because he wasn't good enough, what he said about Sam Darnold was he doesn't like the way that Sam Darnold throws the ball. You know what that means? That means Sam Darnold's going to be great. Thank you, Ben McAdoo. Uh, seriously, Ben McAdoo, where is he working? Is he working for anyone? Is he working anywhere? Is he working for a really? team, a media okay. outlet? Wait a minute. Stugatz has become this obnoxious dismissal guy. Look at, let's, let's, let's go back for a second and recap how it is Stugatz ruined the Baldwin feud from vacation. What? Let's, let's do this. Um, Did first, I? first of all, Stugatz ever the opportunist. When the Baldwin, Baldwin feud began, Stugatz immediately took to Twitter and said, I'm with the Baldwins. Like, immediately left our camp and just was <laughs> riding high with the Baldwins. I just want to be near fame and celebrity. Somewhere there's fame and celebrity. I want to be near it. I was just saying, if there's a fight, I would put my money on the Baldwins. That's all. I'd imme- fight with you, but you, put my money you, on the Baldwins. throw the fight. You immediately took the side of the Baldwins. I did. Do, Mike, does he know? Does he know how he fouled this up last week? Does he know any of what we were doing while he was on vacation? Any of what we were doing to mend the fences with the Baldwins? None of it. He spent his entire vacation escalating tensions and watching John Isner. Yeah. Right, so explain this to me, Mike. From vacation, on his day off, Stugatz called into Golik and Wingo. I did, yeah. Weekly and, appearance, then. All right. And so... This was moments after we sent a uh, a peace treaty. Do you know to, that uh, we send them a cheesecake? The Baldwins, that we sent them a cheesecake? I mean, I love a good cheesecake. Was it New York style or... Did you know that we sent... W- did you know that we sent the Baldwins a cheesecake? I had no... How could I possibly know that? I was up in Lake George. Like, I had no well, idea. My you, phone you, barely you, works. Uh, my phone barely works, but I called Golich and Wingo. I called Golich and Wingo. I did. I did that. I found a, uh, a good sell spot, and I called in for 15 minutes, and then it didn't work anymore. I mean, you guys could have communicated that to me. I had no idea. I mean, there is a thing called communication. We were communicating regularly about the John Isner match. Oh, yeah. But no mention of the Baldwin feud. None. Zero. My defense. I thought well, we were still feuding. I was I trying mean, to... It was, perhaps it's on us to not just assume that you were going to make things worse. Well, here's the thing about Stugatz. Stugatz loves dismissing others as who the hell are you? Now, this was how Daniel Baldwin... Daniel Baldwin got Stugatz incensed because, incensed because he said that we found him wearing a hairnet cooking fries. <laughs> that's what Daniel Baldwin... That's how. He, that's what he launched at Stugatz. He's like, Levitard's doing that show with that guy he found in a hairnet cooking fries and so what is i wasn't it, wearing a hairnet it, <laughs> instead of instead of being funny in coming back at baldwin Stu Gatz on vacation on goalie chin wingo does this so Stu Gatz, i know you said you're off you're on vacation today uh, i don't want anyone perceiving it that you're running from this conversation so you have anything you want to say to the baldwins on our air uh, Running for the conversation, I've instructed Mike Ryan that if we get the Baldwins on, he's going to call me because I'm going to be a part of this conversation. The Baldwins are thinking about doing an on-air conference call with our show. So 
Uh, we'll see. Now, I got nothing to say. Alex is a great actor. Billy did one or two good movies. Steven's okay. Daniel Baldwin, you know, he's a guest at radio host at a Syracuse. So you get under your stuff. You're Daniel Baldwin, man. Like, you're letting you on a radio show. It's unbelievable. And you wouldn't have no radio show unless Alex was your brother. And so, Alex, I cannot believe you. I cannot believe the Baldwin family, of all people, people who get up there, especially Alex, on Saturday Night Live and makes fun of everyone and anyone, including the President of the United States. I can't believe this is the group that's going to be sensitive because we're having a beef with the Baldwin family. Get over yourself. Oh, man. So it was after we sent them a peace treaty yeah, in, right. the, in the form it was of a during. cheesecake. Yeah. It was yeah. during. Sorry. New York style? Or? That's a vintage Stugatz rant telling others to get over themselves. Was Stugatz's vacation in space? <laughs> That's the other thing, man. They pay you for that? Do they pay you for that phone quality? Uh, no, not yet. Uh. We also were talking about hiring Ben McAdoo last week for our show, and now oh. he's ripped him, so we may not be able to hire well, he Ben ripped McAdoo Sam anymore. Darnold. That's not my fault. I mean, stay away from Sam Darnold. That's my quarterback. I mean, please. I don't like the way he throws the ball. Uh, <laughs> you like the way Eli threw the ball? I mean, I don't like the way he gels his hair. How about that? It's getting louder and louder somehow. <laughs> you guys heard that back there? I used to not be able to hear, but it was so clear that time. Guys, I'm deaf. And I'm blind. I am just telling you right You're now. You're also dumb. You are dumb. It's very loud, Stugat. Your headset is very, very loud. I'll turn it down. Did you guys see Gordon Hayward and what happened with his gender reveal? Have you guys seen this? We didn't get to talk about this last week. Uh, Gordon Hayward already has two daughters, and the gender reveal revealed a third daughter, and he looked crestfallen. Like, you need to not <laughs> videotape that, because now for posterity, your third daughter knows that you wanted her to be a boy. <laughs> okay, ready? Say, Daddy, can you help me? Help me. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Whoa, Whoa! It's a girl! Is Daddy happy? Daddy's always happy. (laughs) (laughs) Gordon Hayward's uh, Boston career consists of showing up and needing a Joseph A. Bank to find a suit, breaking his leg, or I'm sorry, not in this order, playing five minutes, breaking his leg. And and that right there. That is Gordon Hayward so far, his Celtics career. I get that, though, because I've told you this story before. There was a finality to what me and my wife, when my wife and I had kids, Dan, we knew that we were not having any more kids after that. And we had twin girls. And so I was in that room where they told us the sex of the kids. My mother was there. My mother-in-law was there. Baby A, girl. Yeah, fist pump, all that. And my wife is ecstatic. She wants two girls. She regrets that now, but she wants two girls. Baby B, girl. <laughs> and I lost my marbles. I mean, I was so upset. Right. So upset. And then we went out to Cheesecake Factory afterwards because, you know, when I'm upset, I got to wash it away with food. And I didn't say a word to anyone. And my mom pulled me by my ear outside and said, this is a big day for you and a bigger day for your wife. You're going to have two daughters. There's nothing better than girls. And I said, Mom, but who am I going to, you know, fling the pill with? <laughs> <laughs> baby b was rachel by the way oh man i was right there sling the pill i mean yeah i understand what gordon's saying like he's got a you know he wants to shoot some hoops he wants to you know all that you stuff could, he, you could do, you that, could do that you could do that with a woman you know you, you i'm here to tell a, him that you can do. i'm here to tell i'm trying to boost his spirits because i'm here to tell him that he can because rachel has turned into this unbelievable lacrosse player and all the things that I thought I was going to get by having a boy, I'm getting them through Rachel, and it's fantastic. Kick, save, and abuse. <laughs> yeah, not that great. Your headset is still way too loud. Oh, really? Let me turn it down. Hold on. They're not on to us. <laughs> They're not on to us, Dan. Don't worry. <laughs> He's not giving you lines. He's just giving he, – never mind. You're an idiot. <laughs> no, nope. He was just saying that to you because you. No, never. Mind. Oh, thought he was saying it to you, like giving it to me, and then I say it to. You. 
Do you want to end the segment? Did you forget how the segments end or what? Is your home an ADT home? Get ADT and help protect against break-ins, fire, and carbon monoxide. For a limited time, get ADT's lowest rate starting at just $28.99 a month from the most trusted name in home security. ADT is the first security company to help keep you safe at home and when you're on the go. Go to ADT.com slash podcast to take advantage of ADT's lowest rate. With 36-month monitoring contract, early termination and installation fees apply. Excludes taxes and fees. Applies to traditional services only. Certain markets excluded. Licenses available at ADT.com. Don Lebertard. How is it that you guys are viewing the Game Show Network as some kind of sad? Stugats. I love the Game Show Network. Well, it's so it? fun. Who doesn't? What I don't sh- under, even understand what's happening. It's what shows watches. does she watch? It's all she watches. All of them? She watches all, all of the shows. But, Mike, it's so wonderfully mindless. Like, it's got to be, you don't have to do anything. You mm-hmm. could just sit there watching television and not think about anything. Maybe you're cutting right to it here. It's just she's only watching mindless entertainment. But as an escape hatch, you can't say this to the people listening right now and not accuse them of the same thing. <laughs> We're, they're not even watching game shows. They're listening to us talk on the radio about somebody watching game shows. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Happy 54. First birthday to Will Ferrell. And happy birthday to him. I don't care. Good luck. Also, happy 53rd birthday to Claude Lemieux. And happy uh. birthday to him. I don't care. <laughs> Good luck. And the big 5 0 for Barry Sanders. And happy birthday to him. I don't care. Good luck. Getting old, man. Barry Sanders. Is Barry crazy. Sanders isn't even the most recent <laughs> legend the Lions have made quit. How about that? The Lions have on their resume two legendary players that they made quit. That's hard to do. Lions will do that to you. <laughs> yes. uh, so, Mike, I don't know what to do with this. I lied to you guys about weekend observations. It'll be in 10 minutes. 10 minutes to weekend observations. But what do I do with Stugatz? Whenever he has a day or two off, he comes in. Have you noticed this? He's extra hot. So what he's doing is, in the first hour, it's the day after the World Cup. He's trying to fix soccer in the first hour. He's also blasting takes right and left on the royal family. And then he's getting mad at his computer and Ben McAdoo and what Ben McAdoo said about Sam Darnold. This Tom Markle, man, i got to be honest with you, because this guy, I mean, he cannot get to a camera quick enough. He has made the royal wedding and the royal family all about Thomas Markle. You would think the Markles are the royal family. Give me a break. He said his daughter, Megan, is not happy that he hasn't seen her smile, a real smile since the wedding. It's all fake. Everything she's doing right now is fake. She's just going through the motions. He actually said it's like a smile, just kind of like a sticker smile that's put on her face and it's permanently there. And he is claiming it's not real. He also says there is too much pressure. There is too much work involved. Listen, she signed up to be a princess. She signed up to be in the royal family. What'd she think? You know what else it comes with? It comes with getting whatever the hell you want. That's what it comes with. It comes with front row seats. It comes with private planes. It comes with nice cars. It comes with big mansions. It comes with a lot of good stuff, too. But now Thomas Markle, who is making this all about him, he wants to travel to England and fix the royal family. The royal family, I'm pretty certain, been doing just fine for a couple so, of I'm, centuries so now. So is the World Cup, by the way, but you wanted to fix that in the first hour of the well, show. Well, I mean, just, you know, a PK per team, whenever they want to use it during a game, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> there's something going on with this royal family that I don't think many people are aware of that I just became aware of after hearing Stugatz talk about it, and I started doing some research. Because I was thinking, you know what? Meghan Markle married Prince Harry, right? What's her new name? So I started looking up the royal family's name because I'm like, I don't know the Queen's last name. I don't know Harry's last name. I don't know Charles's last name. What's their last name, right? So quite a query. So I started looking it up. What do I find? Prince Harry's full name, Henry Charles Albert David. What's his last name? David? I don't know. So I go to look at his brother. What's his brother's last name? Prince Charles' his dad. What's his full name? Charles Philip Arthur George. I don't see a last name there. His brother, William, William Arthur Philip Lewis. And the queen is Elizabeth 
Alexandra May. What are their names? I don't know what their names are, Dan. They all have like seven first names. What's their last name? What's going on? Is there something really ignorant that we're missing here? I don't know. I don't know anything about the royal family. I don't care about the royal family. Whoa. Whoa. What what do you mean? Whoa, 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 whoa. The the wedding was a (laughs) wedding of the century. (laughs) Wedding. It's been a long day of names because on top of that, I figured out Reese Hoskins doesn't have a vowel in his name. What? His first name is all consonants. If you count the Y, probably... sometimes it's a vowel, sometimes a consonant. Riz Hoskins, who's, you know, he's in the home run derby right. tonight for the Phillies, doesn't have a, con- a vowel in his name. Names are weird, man. This is a big day for names with me. Okay. Today's royals don't need a last name. It just is what it is uh, no, in that regard. No, but if they were to have a last name, it would technically be Mountbatten Windsor. All right. Do okay. Do you th- put it on the poll, Guillermo? Do you know the last name of the Royals? Well, uh, they all have different names: David, Larry, Chris, no, the last Peter, name, whatever. You know, he just gave it to you. The, if they had a last name, that's what it would be. Speaking of names, uh, I saw this tweet from Dan Feldman, NBA. Uh, this is funny, Stugatz. Active players who have made All NBA First Team by current conference. The West has LeBron James, Kevin Durant. James Harden, Steph Curry, Anthony Davis, Kawhi Leonard, Chris Paul, Russell Westbrook, DeAndre Jordan, Marcus Gasol, Dirk Nowitzki, Derek Rose. <laughs> the East has Joe Kim Noah. <laughs> Might have Dwayne Wade. We just don't know if he's going to play. Well, or not. that's well. This is the thing. They were TB to, <laughs> to be to be determined was Dwight Howard because he's going to end up somewhere else, and Dwayne Wade. Those are to be determined. <laughs> but there it was. I'm going to do that again because it's like a joke. It's like a funny joke because we don't know Dwayne Wade doesn't have a team right now. And Dwight Howard is not going to be with the Nets. No, he's already with the Wizards, so he's in the East. Okay, so that what, what happened? Good, that, uh, good news to all Wizards fans. Uh, he's this was a quote. I would never try to destroy a team. So things are looking up for all right. Wizards yep. fans. Oh, about his word. I mean, that is too bad that Dwight Howard now ends up in the East because just to be able to drop in there again, again, active players who have made all NBA first team by current conference. Let's pretend White did not sign with the Wizards. Yes, yes. let's do that. You know, for the purposes of the end of this segment, <laughs> let's do it. To end the segment on the proper joke, uh active players according to Dan Feldman NBA who have made all NBA first team by current conference, the West LeBron James, Kevin Durant, James Harden, Steph Curry, Anthony Davis, Kawhi Leonard, Chris Paul, Russell Westbrook, DeAndre Jordan, Marcus All, Dirk Nowitzki, Derrick Rose. The East, Joe Kim Noah. <laughs> to be the man, you got to beat the man. <laughs> Woo! And then the first thing that uh, Silver does is, all right, let's change the seatings. Let's figure this out. We need to figure this out. LeBron's in the West, everybody. No more conferences. It's kind of archaic when you really think about <laughs> when it. When you yeah? really think about it, LeBron going to L.A., uh, no more conferences. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's what it took. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, uh, Stugatz's weekend observations are going to be next here. Don Lebatard. I finally found a guy who seems to be credible, who in print has lent to what I've been saying for a couple of years now, that Elon Musk is a quack. So I asked Stugatz, what does the article say about him? And he just keeps repeating. He says he's a quack. Yeah, he just keeps saying quack. And then you ask him, did you read the article? And he says, quack, quack. It's like talking to a duck. Stugatz. Elon Musk is a... What's the headline? Because it's why you clicked on it. And then you said, get me this writer. He's credible. I don't know how to pronounce this word. Uh, Would you mind reading the headline? Elon Musk is a messianic huckster. Like, so he is like giving off messiah, but he's a messiah fraud. Exactly. I I was talking about huckster, but thank you. This is the Don Lebatar show with the Stugats on ESPN radio. Guillermo, put it on the poll, please. Are you sad that there's only one remaining blockbuster? A texter writes in, and this is such a good question. Uh, in fact, we're going to do weekend observations and circle back around and have some time to think about this question because the texture and he, he or she seems genuinely curious. And the question is, why is Stugatz the way he is? Hmm. And I, I'd like to explore that. So would I. Uh, but in the meantime, let's do his weekend observations. It is time for Stugatz to share his game notes. No one in the media will tell you what happened better than my boy Stu. Weekend observations brought to you by Vivid Seats. When's the last time you were at the game or concert? Go to vividseats.com slash ESPN today for your exclusive discount offer. 
Vivid Seats, the official ticket partner of ESPN. Dan, once again, the World Cup will not be returning to its original home of China. No Djokovic, Novak is back. The Joker. You know what the AK in Novak stands for? Back. Marty Fish was wrong. What happened there? What's the matter? Hey, you put your hand up like something was the matter I'm there. Just, the AK, what does it stand for? Back. I was just a little confused. You can't spell back without the AK. Well, that I would have understood. Right. Well, the AK stands for back. Anyway, Marty Fish was wrong. It absolutely is the same John Isner. I'm here to save soccer. There should be one penalty kick per game for each team to use whenever they want during the game. Soccer saved. You're welcome. The golden ball given to the World Cup's player of the tournament should have went to Mike Ryan. You could say we backed up the Brinks truck. Arizona Cardinals GM Steve Kime dropping the name of a cop in an effort to help himself. During his DUI arrest, that cop no longer being alive. Steve, the Stugats, is strong in you. In a weird uh, weird world where I can only visit the places of my choosing, the Sagamore Hotel on Lake George would be one of my five places. By the way, try making that list. Ain't easy. Me, taking two days off during the Papa John shows. Heady play. I've worked three days since ESPN announced our new four-year deal. Also, I'm taking off Wednesday. Put this in the things people don't care about file. A game to determine who finishes third in soccer. Unless, of course, you had the over. Would it kill England to put some zip on those shots? Isaiah Thomas to the Nuggets. Earl Boykins was so close. Chase Utley retired. The news here is that Chase Utley was still playing. Chase Utley is the second baseman on my all-hell team. No one turns the 6-6-6 double play like Chase Utley. What? Well, maybe there's one other person. We'll get to them later. Headline, Tony Romo wins Celebrity Golf Tournament, July. The S in Isner stands for soft. The I in Isner stands for I can't do anything but serve. The A in Anderson stands for all day. The O in Anderson stands for owes me $50. DeMarco Murray retires at the age of 30. Listen, there's simply no reason to argue over this anymore. Football's bad for you. I'm not going to argue it. 36 members of the FIFA Council made $250,000 apiece for attending three meetings in 2018. FIFA Council, the Stugats, is strong in you. Kevin Durant, every time you argue with someone about your value or greatness, you validate your critics. The reason you are sensitive is because the truth hurts. We all know you're a great player. What you did was weak and it was lame. Own it. I'm only seven pages in, but the Andre Agassi autobiography is one of the best books I've ever read. Really good. Isner. I've been Anderson. telling you that for 10 years. Up seven pages in, I listen. Isner. Anderson. Worst six hour and 36 minute match of all time. Serena Williams. Do it in a major. Tiger Woods. Lowering expectations before the Open Championship by saying Carnoustie is the most difficult of the Open Championship courses. Had he play. It's a day later and I'm still Only on page 7 of the Andre Agassi autobiography. Great read. France, opening as a favorite for a tournament that doesn't start until 2022. Soccer. Do you think the Patriots will still be the favorites to win the AFC East in 2022? Imagine how good the Dodgers would be if they didn't have to trot out Clayton Kershaw every fifth day. The best pitcher of all time is 3-4 and this season. On a loaded team. Terrell Owens, the way you've acted since being elected to the Hall of Fame is the exact reason it took you so long to get into the Hall of Fame. And even worse, you're making Bill Polian look good. Is it just me or anyone else terrified 
of running over those spikes when returning a rental car. Manny Machado. Put it on the pole, Guillermo. Are you terrified of running over those spikes when returning a rental car? I slow down every time. I don't know yeah, how much of yeah, you going. Yeah, so do I. And then I'm all of a sudden like, wait a minute, nobody get near the reverse. <laughs> Manny Machado not playing because of field condition, otherwise known as we're trading him. Richard Sherman says the Seahawks have lost their way, otherwise known as I'm no longer on that team. Papa John losing everything. While being trained on how not to lose everything. Papa, the Stugats is strong in you. <laughs> Brett Bielema, now an assistant with the Patriots, says he prefers the NFL and will never go back to college. Brett, in five seasons as head coach for Arkansas, you were 29 and 34 overall, 11 and 29 in your conference, and you lost in the belt ball. Like you have a choice. Papa John. Doesn't want to do business with Roger Goodell. Papa John, it appears no one wants to do business with you. And it's probably a good time to zip it up. Novak Djokovic has a wife. Wow. Jelena Smokovic. Oh, God. What happened? I mean... The smoker. <laughs> uh, I mean... Uh. Smokovich. I thought we weren't doing that anymore. Mr. and Mrs. Smokovich. Oh, All right. Okay. Novak Djokovic's son, I mean Smokovich's son, stole the show from his dad. Hey, kid, the Stugats is strong in you. Colin Sexton, fantasy monster. Magic Johnson said, when he looks at LeBron James, it's like looking in the mirror. Magic, is it a full-length mirror? If so, look down closer at the hands. Yours has five rings on it. His has three. He looks nothing like you. When did Southwest Airlines decide it would be a good idea to hire comedians as flight attendants? Do me a favor, get through the oxygen masks and how to blow up your life vest and shut the hell up. Speaking of hell, divert the plane's course. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's a fine. Yeah, it is. Divert the plane's course and go straight there on flight 666. And when you arrive... Say hi to Art for me. Dan, those are the weekend observations. What's the fine, Mike? $2, $1, oh, $5? That's, uh, $5 that's, fine. that's the big one. That's the max? That's the original. That's the pioneer fine. Wait, I killed Lute Olsen. He's still alive. That's I didn't pay a dime. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's 50 And you know what? You owe $55. $55. $50. Dollars. No money coming off a little vacation. Sorry. Uh, I think I saw some money. What? More money, more problems. $58. Support for the Dan Levitard Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Let's talk about buying a home for a minute. Because of rising interest rates, there's a lot of unpredictability when it comes to buying a home these days. It's causing a lot of anxiety and stress for a lot of people. Well, our friends at Quicken Loans are doing something about that. They're calling it the power buying process. Here's how it works. Quicken Loans will verify your income, your assets, and credit in less than 24 hours to give you a verified approval. That gives you the strength of a cash buyer. Then once you're verified, you qualify for their all-new exclusive rate shield approval. This is very cool here. First, they'll lock your rate up for 90 days while you shop. Now, here's the best part. If rates go up, your rates stay the same. But if rates go down, your rate also drops. Either way, you win. It's the kind of thinking you'd expect from America's largest mortgage lender. To get started, simple. Go to rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz. Rate shield approval, only valid on certain 30-year purchase transactions. Additional conditions or exclusions may apply. Based on Quicken Loans data in comparison to public data records, equal housing lender, license in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org number 3030. Don Lebatard. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. Stugatz. Hey, hey, hey. Goodbye. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Do you have many songs that make you sad because they remind you of people that you've lost? This song right here, this song right here, every time, makes me sad because uh, John Saunders, as much of a professional pillar as you've ever seen grace the ESPN airwaves, 
Look at Mike furiously uh, going to find Billy Ray Cyrus's awkward tribute to John Saunders. But John <laughs> Saunders, uh, there, there are a couple people at ESPN who just really love my father. For some reason, I don't know what the connection is, but with Chris Mortensen and John Saunders, they just wanted badly to uh, sit next to my father one time on on Highly Questionable. And, and we lost John Saunders before we could get there. We were planning it. We were starting to do it. And John Saunders loved more than anything else. My father trying to recreate this video where there are papers flying past someone. You know, my father does those lyrics sure. on television where he does either rap songs or things like this. And we had a fan blowing papers across his face and one of them got stuck to the side of his face and he kept reading. He kept reading the lyrics to this song. And so I've just brought everything to a grinding halt with an incredibly sad story. But do you have songs like that that remind you of the dead? I mean, the dead. Yeah. Um, Chris Cody made a mistake during the local hour and then somehow, uh, in trying to correct it, made it worse two times. He was trying to say hockey fight. Instead, he said Focky fight. And then when he tried to correct it, <laughs> he said, no, 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 no. I said Falk. That's what happened. It, happened. That, it reminded me of Vince Scully. Vince Scully, man, there are dangers. It was an honest and an innocent mistake. It was an honest and it reminded me of Vince Scully. There are certain things you have to, man, this has happened to Steve Levy on the air with a bulging disc in the neck. I know, Roy, the same thing happens to me. I get scared around certain words as well. But I you're know. doing it on purpose. I said, Mike, do you want the sound of that? He's like, no, we don't want to do that no, again. But he didn't say it wrong. But Dan did it again. <laughs> well, Here's Vince Scully. Back about my third year, yeah, about 1952, the Dodgers were playing Cincinnati, and Cincinnati had an outfielder named Lloyd Merriman. I'll never forget it. And uh, Lloyd hit a ball foul, and my mind told me to say, hot shot hit foul. No, oh, no, no. no. It, and it never came out that way. <laughs> and, and everybody in the booth fell down, and I was absolutely mortified. <laughs> and the reason I remember Lloyd Merriman, I, I started filling. He's a former Marine Air Corps pilot, saw combat in Korea. You know, I did on and on. That, that really, uh, <laughs> that, that had to be, considering how young I was, uh, yeah, that, that was about it. I'm surprised it doesn't happen more often around here talking for four hours a day. What is your objection to Terrell Owens? Isn't he just that he's making Bill Polian look good? But wait a minute. Didn't they, I mean, who looks more petty in this situation? Who looks pettier in this situation? Terrell Owens or the Hall of Fame saying we're not even going to mention your name, even though you're a Hall of Famer, if you don't show up for the if you don't show up for the ceremony, we will not. We will only mention the names of the people who are there. And by the way, so Terrell Owens has a better chance getting his name mentioned dying before that ceremony right. than he does because they mentioned the dead, but they're not mentioning Terrell Owens. Like who's more, who do you believe is being pettier there? Uh, I believe T.O. is. I mean, he started the pettiness by not attending the Hall of Fame ceremony. No, I mean, they started, started the pettiness by not acknowledging that he's one of Listen, the best receivers ever because they were holding a petty grudge about his moral behaviors, okay. even though he never committed a crime other than the crimes against sportsmanship. Okay, that's fair. But for whatever reason, now, listen, I think Terrell Owens is a first ballot guy. But for whatever reason, a lot of uh, wide receivers, they just have to wait. That position just has to wait. I mean, Chris Carter had a great career, and he waited forever to get into the Hall of Fame. And so God, he's got to wait. God, Terrell Owens is better than any of them. Okay? I, I understand no, that. No, no, but you, if you understood that, you wouldn't be saying you got to wait just because Chris Carter is not Terrell Owens, not by a long shot. But, Dan, you got to the Hall of Fame. You made it. You win. In the end, you won. You are one of the greatest players to ever play in the NFL. You're validated by getting that Hall of Fame jacket by being a part of that ceremony. And so I just think he's being... I think the reasons he's not in is because of how he's acting since he's gotten in. I mean. Did you have a finish to this segment or are you just going to peter out? He's petty.
Stu Gatz here. There's nothing small about your business, your passion, your hours, your reputation. It's all huge. Your partnerships, even bigger. With Dell Small Business Technology Advisors, you'll get the tech, advice, and one-on-one partnership to help your business grow. Because with reliable Dell PCs with Intel Core processors, you can focus on what matters most, getting business done. Call 877-BY-DELL to speak with an advisor today. That's 877-BY-DELL. Don Lebatard. Metal nets have to be right up there with like ice skates as the most dangerous things that people do to play sports, right? Because you know that the people that are buying those metal nets are largely kids. And if they have a hoop that they lower, it's like at seven feet tall and they're just dunking on them. And you know the fingers are getting stuck in those nets. Stugats. In track and field, the gun they shoot off, that's kind of dangerous, no? <laughs> it's not an actual gun. I don't, I don't think it's a starter an, pistol. It's actual... It doesn't shoot anything out. I know it doesn't actually shoot no. a bullet. It Nothing shoot... comes out of it? No. Oh. Just the sound. No. Sound, it's, yeah. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Cars, homes, boats, motorcycles, RVs, and more at Progressive.com. Alex Bregman of the Astros is going to join us in just a minute here, we hope, on the Shell Pennzoil performance line. Want to sit courtside at a Mavs game with Mark Cuban or announce a pick at the 2019 NFL Draft? How about an amazing experience with us down in Miami? Bid now at ebay.com slash ESPN on over 80 once-in-a-lifetime experiences. It all benefits the V Foundation for Cancer Research, the ESPYs auction, now through Wednesday at ebay.com slash ESPN. Here's your Sports Center update. Novak Djokovic defeated Kevin Anderson in straight sets to capture the Wimbledon men's title. Angelique Kerber beat Serena Williams in straight sets. She won the women's championship. And finally, DJ Steve Aoki is launching Pizza Oki, a service that will offer pizza lovers around the country Innovative pies through delivery with plans for a retail flagship location. Quote, I'm so excited to finally launch Pizza Oki. If you know me, you know I love pizza and I love technology. So coming up with a concept in which I could tie both of these components together was a piece of cake. What he loves is pies. That's his whole gimmick. His whole gimmick is pie. Pizza Oki sounds like any pizza place. (laughs) We are starting off with five kitchens that will service 16 greater L.A. areas. Aoki told People Magazine. Who doesn't love a nice slice of za, dude? (laughs) Blink security cameras are one of the hottest Amazon Prime Day deals. This is your this is your phone. What's going on it's with a it? Five dollar fine for you and your no phone. way, man. Yeah, Siri's arguing with you now. No, I got this new phone. Stunning t- that it's so loud too. Stunning that you can't hear anything. I, I I got the new phone. I was resistant to upgrade the phone, and I did because I don't know how to use it, and it doesn't have the button anymore, and I don't know how to control it. I just don't. It doesn't have that button. That button is like it makes me feel I better. I don't know how to control it. Siri, where's your button? Where is it? <laughs> Siri. You can't just start talking to your phone. You have to, you have to, you have to summon Siri first. Hey, Siri. <laughs> where's the button? <laughs> Siri. All right. Can you continue, please? It's got no button. Please. It's got this, this face technology. Like it scans my face and it gets me back into the phone. It's weird, man. Siri. Blink security cams are one of the hottest Amazon Prime Day deals going. Siri. Up to 40% off a Blink motion-activated video system. That's as low as $69. It's a great deal. Visit Amazon.com, search Blink Camera, score the lowest prices of the year on super smart Blink cameras. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Siri, where's the button? Where's the button? Do you uh, think you're doing your job well today? Yeah. All right, all right, okay. I mean, because your weekend observations, you dropped right in the middle of them. Like, are you just trying to get now people to send you free stuff in the middle of them? You just dropped like a promo code for the Sagamore. Like, you you just trying now. I mean, but what are you doing? What do you think I've been doing? But what what are you doing in your weekend observations? You're just fishing for places to send. Like, 
You're putting little infomercials in your weekend observations because you do your job so well that it should be sponsored all over the place. They pay me a lot for that. What I really wanted to do was the Sagamore, okay? They've been so good to me over the years. They really have. I wanted to give them a little shout-out on the air. And I'm telling you, if you make a list, if I tell you in a weird world you can only go to five places if you're choosing, it's very difficult to do. Because if you choose the wrong place, Dan, you might never be able to go to the Masters. You might miss Super Bowls. I'm telling you, it's ve- I did this over the weekend. It was very difficult, but the Sagamore is one of my five places. That's the only reason I did it. little shout-out and maybe create a, you know, a little topic here. They did not pay him anything, just to clear that up for that mention. No, nothing. There's no payment. For nothing. Not yet. Not they're, yet. No, the they're, ne- they're, they're never going to do it. I'm telling you, man. I paid their towel taxes. I paid their ridiculous resort fees and all that. I pay a lot of money to go to that place every year. I just, I love it. And I wanted to give them a little shout out. That's it. And perhaps I'll get paid one day down the road. Um, Guillermo, we're going to have Alex Bregman on with us next segment. He's a Houston Astro. He is uh, in the all star home run contest. Uh, Guillermo and Chris are down on the home run contest. They don't, uh, they, no Aaron Judge, no Giancarlo Stanton. Um, so where are you guys with the home run contest? I mean, I, I don't want to say I'm down on it. Bryce Harper's doing it this year, but there weren't, there's not the big names that you would think that they have every year. Like you have Jesus Aguilar, who's had a good season so far. He has a couple home runs and Alex Bregman's in there. But I think that this year it's, you know, Open field, anyone can win it. There's just not the big names that we're used to. All right, well, that seems like an impolite welcome of Alex Bregman as he comes in here oh, to man. discuss the home run derby with us, but I'm sure he's hearing some of it. Oh. It's not the best way to intro him, but welcome to the show, Alex. Thanks for being on with us. This is the big name. I mean. I, well, I want, are you disappointed at all that Judge and Stanton and the big bopping monsters aren't in it? Let's start there as awkwardly as possible. <laughs> Well, thanks for having me get on, guys. I'm excited to be here at T-Mobile in DC, and I'm uh, excited to be in the in the Derby. And I think it's going to be I think it's going to be a blast. It's going to be a fun time, and um, you, we got to see Aaron and, and Stanton and all those guys in it last year. And um, you, you definitely want you definitely wish uh, they they'd be in it, but um, it's going to be a blast anyway. I think I think you're going to I think a lot of America is going to find out a lot about guys like Kyle Schwarber and. Uh, Reese Hoskins and, and, and watch them put on a show as oh, well. Oh, Schwarber. That guy's a keg softball player. That guy, Schwarber. You guys look at him and say that guy, that guy would bomb, uh, all sorts of keg softball leagues all over the globe. <laughs> he's, uh, he's, he's a, he's a, he's a really, he's a really good player. And, uh, I got, I got the chance to play with him growing up, uh, for the USA national team. And, um, he, he definitely can hit the ball a long way. So can you, uh, how tired are you guys? Because I think the reason that Stanton got out of this is because he wanted the all-star break and then taking all those swings ends up, uh, Judge's second half of his season last year was all screwed up because of how tired he was from the home run derby. Like what level of fatigue are you at as you guys crawled? These seasons are long and you guys keep playing deep into them. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, we're 99 games in, especially the, the Houston Astros after a World Series run. We, we got a shorter, shorter, uh, all-star break. I mean, not all-star break, excuse me, uh, off-season. Um, so we, we definitely feel it a little bit, but, um, nothing you can't grind through. Um, and so you have no concerns about, uh, cause, right, this is a common complaint about the All-Star Derby, that you get in there and you take so many swings that it screws up your swing for the rest of the season. You had, you've had an interesting season in that your first, what, 40 games, you didn't have a homer, or you had one homer the first 40 games, and now, what do you have, 20 since then? Yeah, something like that. I think, uh, I think I started trying to hit them in DP, and they started, they started coming in the game, so maybe this home run derby will help. We'll see. Wait a minute. How did this happen? You just decided in BP one day that you were going to start hitting home runs, and then you became a home run hitter. I don't know. I, I said, I said, hey, I need to start hitting the ball out of the ballpark in BP because if I can't do that in BP, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it in the game. So <laughs> I, uh, I started, I started hitting them in BP, and next thing you know, we're hitting them in the game. Hold on a second. So this is the sophisticated kind of science that you apply to your craft at the height of sports. <laughs> I guess. I guess I think it, I think it, I think it's worked for me. I don't know I don't know how other guys do it. I know uh, Freddie Freeman said that he only hits line drives over the shortstop's head in VP, and that works for him. So I think everybody's different, but my thing has been trying to hit homers. So if I told you six months ago you were going to be in the home run derby, you would have said, "Ah, I'd have said probably not." But 
I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm excited. I watched it growing up as a kid and hopefully be able to put on a, a, a good show tonight for the fans. Alex, what's going on here? Mom loved the Yankees. You purposely did not like the Yankees just to annoy her. What are you doing? Um, my dad and I both grew up rooting for the Red Sox every night because the, because of uh, my mom's love for the Yankees. She was from New York. She always rubbed it in our face that the Yankees are the best team in the world. So my dad and I both grew up rooting for rooting for the Red Sox uh, every time they play against their Yanks. And <laughs> now I find myself rooting against both of them playing for the Astros. Well, I was just going to say, like, <laughs> you guys are clearly the three best teams in baseball, right? Like, those. That's it. Your family must be fighting against each other. Oh yeah, oh yeah, always. How does this work with mom though? She can't be rooting for the Yankees now, right? No, mom is uh. Mom's rooting for the Astros now. She she's a she's a big time a big time Astros fan. So all the Yankee faithful, um, she she's a traitor. She is a traitor. She came over to the to the to the Astros. Uh, T Mobile is going to donate five thousand dollars for every home run tonight in the home run derby. Ten thousand dollars per home run hit off of a magenta ball to Team Rubicon. Team Rubicon is a veteran lead disaster response organization. Uh, Alex, thank you for being on with us. You want to tell us anything about what you're doing specifically with T-Mobile here before you get on, get out of here? Yeah, um, here at the T-Mobile store, um, are giving, giving away everyone free New Era hats. You get to design it yourself. Uh, it's part of their Hats for Heroes campaign. If you're in the area, everyone should come on by. Uh, and like you said, they're donating 5000 to Team Rubicon and 10000 for every bonus time home run. So um, it's uh, we're, we're having a good time here at T-Mobile. and. Uh, and and hopefully uh, a lot of people will post on Twitter and Instagram using hats off for heroes today. So, what were yeah. you and what were you and Verlander doing on the plane last night? That was what a was, private. What do you plane? call that? That was a private plane, right? We we well Verlander Verlander I'd say is an A list celebrity, that, but that was my attempt to, from to get off the D list celebrity and become a, at least a C or a B list celebrity <laughs> with his brother. Uh, it didn't work, I don't think. But what was the attempt? Tell us what the attempt. <laughs> what what was the attempt? Uh, it's called the In My Feelings Challenge. Um, Lance Stevenson, uh, a few other uh, guys in the NBA have done it. And we just say uh, it's about time that a, a few baseball players do it. What a better time to do it than on Air Verlander on the way to the All-Star game. Did, were you calling it Air Verlander? It was a private plane. How many people were on the private plane? Uh, there was... I think eight of us. So yeah, well, that's what we call it. Verlander's Verlander. balling, right? Verlander, <laughs> the entire off season, he's private planing you guys all over the place, isn't he? I well, I wish. I tell you what, I wish. We're gonna try. We're gonna try and make that happen this off season if we win another World Series. Uh, you should do more. He's cheap, is what you're saying. What? Uh, should, it, sounds, it, it sounds like that's yeah. not what. He, what? Uh, well, listen. What? He's are, are, yes or no? I'm not, True. Hey, I'm, not, I'm not saying. I'm not saying that at all. He was in Europe uh, <laughs> getting married to to, to Kate. This. Uh, this off season, so we didn't Wait we didn't get to see him much. He was Wait a little he was a little busy. It's not uh, Verlander's plane; it's Upton's plane, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. We're just gonna call it Air Verlander. Okay, we, we Hashtag Air it. Upton. <laughs> it, it's Upton's plane. Thank you for being on with us. Good luck tonight. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Is your home an ADT home? Get ADT and help protect against break-ins, fire, and carbon monoxide. For a limited time, get ADT's lowest rate starting at just $28.99 a month from the most trusted name in home security. ADT is the first security company to help keep you safe at home and when you're on the go. Go to ADT.com slash podcast to take advantage of ADT's lowest rate. With 36-month monitoring contract, early termination and installation fees apply. Excludes taxes and fees. Applies to traditional services only. Certain markets excluded. Licenses available at ADT.com. Don Lebertard. People who love this show tend to really, really love Stugatz. Thank you. Stugatz. I mean... Yeah, the love is unreasonable for a man of your despicable <laughs> core. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. Mike, Stugatz is getting greedier and greedier and less and less subtle, and his need for takes is so omnipresent that he is now sneaking in thoughts to me right before the microphones get turned on. Yeah. And he does it really quickly and gets in and out. So a second before he knew you were going to turn the microphone on, even at the end of last hour, he forgot that we have clocks around here of any kind. 
What he did on the front end of that is he snuck in right before you turned on the mics. Tebow should be in the home run derby and then backed off from the microphone. <laughs> I uh, I throw it out there. It's like chum in the water. And I let you guys decide if it's uh, something interesting to you. No, the speed with which you delivered it, though, like you snuck it in like you Tebow, were home run derby. A, like a buzzer beater. You were you were shooting a buzzer beater. I even stick my neck in and then I pull it back out. Yeah. But I mean, you want to generate some real interest in the home run derby tonight. You're not going to do it with the guy we just had on and maybe Bryce Harper. But you would do it with Tim Tebow. You would? Well, hold, let's back up. The guy we just had on is not the way. That's not Alex Bregman. Properly respectful. But, Mike, Bregs. How, do you, how do you work around this? The amount of hostility. We had a baseball player there. Joined us halfway through the segment. That interview was five minutes long. The torrent of complaints coming in <laughs> about having a baseball player on. It just not, it was it, the attention deficit disorder, addiction, stimuli addiction in this country going on with the neat. That was literally five minutes. We talked to that person <laughs> and you so badly don't want baseball, which moves too slow around anything where you're being entertained. Then you just prefer, Hey, do show instead of talking to the guy who's in the home run derby. This is a brutal time. This week is the worst week in sports. Yeah. It's awful. It's, you have, this is why the ESPYs are in the middle of the week because nobody's doing anything. You got the all-star game and a home run derby that Stanton and Judge don't want any part of, any part of. So once you take Stanton and Judge out of the all-star game, what do you got? You got Stugatz wanting Tim Tebow. In the in the home run derby, I'm just trying to generate some excitement, some buzz around the home run derby this week. That's all. I think Tebow would do that. I really do. You also have the Open Championship this week towards the end of the week, so I'll be thoroughly distracted Thursday. Good, Friday. I've got that to look forward to. You do, but Tebow. I mean, come on, Dan. That would be people would tune in to watch Tebow. I agree. In the home, they I would, agree. right? Yeah. I think you guys are forgetting last year's home run derby. Yeah, it had Stanton and Judge, but it's fun. Like the new format is fun. People have to beat a clock. Like. We don't know these names, but last year no one knew Justin Bohr, and he hit 23 they home runs in the it. first round. They did improve it. So, so we don't know them now, but they could become future names that you know. Like, this could be fun. Funny conversation that happened here during the break is Mike Ryan looked at the television, saw first take, and said, ooh, this is good. We can get Stugatz on this. Do you see who's hosting? And Stugatz looks up at the screen and says, is that Holland?" And that's not who he was being asked about. He was uh. being asked about the woman, the woman in the middle of the screen. Now, Stugatz, one of the most epic pranks ever played around here was, uh, we went to Bristol, Connecticut and Stugatz had been on television with both Tony Collins and Cassidy Hubbard, but yep. he can't tell them apart in any way. Which one is the, which one is presently hosting first take Stugatz? Is that Tony Collins or is that Cassidy Hubbard? Still holding a grudge about that, by the way. And I don't hold grudges. You know that. I'm still upset at both of you for that. You and Mike Ryan. Um, I think and I'm looking at her now. I think it's Cassidy. Okay. So you're wrong again. What? And this is how it happens with him. He can't tell them apart. And so he introduced us to Tony Collins as Cassidy Hubbard. And then later on, we tricked him because he was disoriented. And we sat Tony Collins in front of him, but pretended that she was Cassidy Hubbard. And we tricked him again, just like we tricked him now. <laughs> so now Cassidy Hubbard is scampering in here. And Stugatz, what do you have to say to her? Well, I mean, I apologize. I, I think the flattering thing for Cassidy is even though she wasn't there and even though it wasn't her, I was thinking of Cassidy. I mean, that, that should be flattering. Well, I you think, want no? to apologize. She's right here. Thank right you. For, here. Thank you. You want to apologize to her face? I apologize, Cassidy. I really do. I should be apologizing to Tony as well. Hopefully we'll get Do you her, like but... Tony or is she nice? At least? Tony's very nice. She's from Miami. Oh, she went okay. out of her way the last time she was here to, to find me. The last time I she was here. She is a sweetheart. I really like her though. Right. She, she she's went so out of nice. her way to find me because she's from Miami. She likes our show. She wanted to meet me. That was like a month ago. And, and, and you and I did first take, yeah. I don't know, what, six months ago. Well, I left a good impression on you though then. You left a great impression yeah. on me. I am really embarrassed right now. I don't embarrass easily. Well, you're I... about to be more embarrassed. Oh no. A little bit more. Oh no. Because Stugatz, that's Tony. That's Tony. Oh, oh, no, Cassidy. Oh. That is Tony. Cassidy does not look like her. It's the same girl you I mean, saw this brown morning hair and that you I, introduced. I, I'm that. Tony, are you telling me I hate all I'm of you? Tony. I hate all of you. He even I offered hate... advice to me two weeks ago. If you need Tony. help with Tony. anything, Tony. 
Stop it right now. No, don't get mad at her. Tony, stop it right now. Don't Tony, get mad at her. I love you. No, I you apologize. I feel Cassidy. terrible. You love Cassidy. This is such a bad trick that you played on me, Levitar. <laughs> How <laughs> dare you do this to me? my client's idea. How can you not know that this is Tony? Mike, you have to cut up just <laughs> the level of insane rage of Stugatz by itself. Just the, the, those two sentences. This is such a bad trick that you played on me, Levitard. How dare you do this to me? It was Ryan's idea. Don Levitard. I feel terrible. Here's the thing with you. You don't actually feel terrible. I didn't feel a no, thing, to no, be honest you, with no, you. No, you said, I don't really no, care. I know. You announcing I feel terrible is just your way to move on to the next terrible thing you're going to do. Stugatz. They're just words, and words mean nothing They to don't you. mean nothing. His yeah. words mean words, nothing. Words are just transitions to your next lie. That's so right. They're not words. They are bridges to lies. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Roger Bennett going to join us in just a minute here on the Shell Penzoil Performance Line as the World Cup wrapped up yesterday. Here's your Sports Center update. Novak Djokovic defeated Kevin Anderson in straight sets to capture the Wimbledon men's title. Angelique Kerber beat Serena Williams in straight sets to win the women's championship. And finally, the more money you make, the less time you spend on the Internet, according to a published study done by the National Bureau of Economic Research. It's Amazon Prime Day. Do not miss the hottest deal of the year on those incredible Blink security cameras. They're up to 40% off, but you need to hurry. You really do. Visit Amazon.com, search Blink Camera, and score the lowest prices of the year on super smart Blink cameras. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. We're very grateful that Roger Bennett, really the authority in this country when it comes to bringing soccer to Americans. Men in Blazers are presenting Encyclopedia Blazer Tanica. It's available now on the Men in Blazers podcast, hugely popular, available Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Thanks to him for spending so much time with us during the World Cup. Are you uh, are you like us uh, having trouble summoning happiness for the French? Yeah, you know, by the way, don't turn off Tracy Chapman. Good God, that's my music. All right, hold on a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Keep playing the song. Hold on, we'll keep playing it. Yeah, keep it on. You see, my old man's got a problem. He lived with a bottle, that's the way it is. Um, I've got to say, I became American recently, Dan, as I think you know. And what I've realized, watching France win the World Cup, arguably deserved winners of this World Cup, their second title, uh, yesterday, or a, a team of intelligence and youth and rippled muscle. What I realize is the last vestiges of my Englishness is my inability not only to, uh, to despise French glory, I can't even stomach French happiness. And there was a lot of it yesterday. Um, they deserve their success, I will say. They are an astonishing collective in a World Cup in which so many of the big buzzed about hype stars Ronaldo, Messi, Neymar. Neymar couldn't even stay um, vertical for more than five minutes at a time. They all crapped out. And France, they've got star names, Kylian Mbappe. Oh, we know exactly how old he is. I think even people who hate sport know that he's 19 years of age. Paul Pogba. they got so many stars, but they subsume their egos, played as a true collective. In, a, in Didier Deschamps, the French manager's slightly defensive, risk-averse system. And that was what delivered glory in this World Cup, collective rather than individual ego. You told us before it started that you weren't going to buy on England because it always hurts. Then we talked to you and you'd bought on England, <laughs> even though it always hurts. And man, I warned you, man, man I told did you. they go into the toilet. The moment that you believed is the moment they went into the toilet. It's all about me. I control sports. That's why the Chicago White Sox are going to win the World Series next year. I'm going to do something. I believe in them or not believe in them. And it's going to allow my beloved uh, Sox to, to grab the clown. Listen, the reality is you can sully yourself in football teams. You can, oh, my God, watching Peru in those opening rounds, glorious. Watching um, you know, England gave us fake hope. It was really like a man with a... Um, with incredible boldness, having a comb over ultimately. That was where it ranked as hope. But the only, you can believe in France ultimately. And by the way, we should credit Croatia. Oh. 4.1 million people. Unbelievable. Courageous. Tenacious. They never. 
stopped. Hard charging, that midfield duo, Modric, Rakitic, like Simon and Garfunkel in Central Park, a duo, harmony at their best. But there, it doesn't, none of that matters. None of that matters because the real winner of this World Cup, guys, Vladimir Bloody Putin. It was a, just a global triumph. It, the 1980 Olympics, you guys are too young to remember that. But that was a show of Russian might, Russian power, Russian ripple muscle. This World Cup, ultimately... What it did was normalize Russia in the eyes of the world with FIFA kind of playing along and even with the joy of the World Cup. And it was delirious. So many Americans fell in love with the sport of soccer for the first time. There was a little bit of geopolitical darkness at the heart of that joy, ultimately. Roger, uh, quickly here, back to Croatia. How did you feel about Croatia celebrating like they won something yesterday? Oh, come I mean, on, please. Man. Come on, man. I mean, come on. Yeah, well, I, I have to say, that is a country that has been war-torn, battered. Almost all of those footballers um, have suffered personally. Their families um, have suffered in the most brutal ways that we can't imagine within the confines of American sport. It was a miracle. England ultimately played them in the semi-final. We thought they were a team of destiny. Croatia even more thought they were a team of destiny. And I have to say, I, I take my hat off to them. Everything that they accomplish, they have, a, they have no investment in youth development that, like we do here in America. They have no strong federation. Their football is ridden with corruption and, and political interference. And to overachieve, to, to transcend all of the handicaps that they had and propel themselves. What those guys, the 23 must have experienced in the past 32 days as a, as a human odyssey, not a sporting one. They can celebrate all they like. That was remarkable. And I will say, watching the men's World Cup final yesterday, I want to say this. My God, at kickoff, all I could feel was, Dan, please let there be an American team in the World Cup men's final in my lifetime, and we can celebrate win or lose just like the Croatians. Bloody amazing. Let me explain to the audience what just happened here in this studio. Stugatz got in there with his lazy, easy take, as he loves to do. Hey, Croatia, call me when you've won something. And Roger beat him down with the phrase war-torn inside of four Inside of four words, two of them were war-torn, and Stugatz just left the studio because it was just a brutal assault by Roger Bennett. Unnecessary, frankly, to go straight from Stugatz's easy take of, well, Croatia, why don't you win something, to war-torn. Stugatz has left the studio mortified, Roger, because of how you buried him. I mean, if you're not first or last, buddy. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I don't know how you say that in Croatian, Stugatz. But I'd, uh, I wouldn't bother learning it. It's an amazing achievement. They are utterly delirious. And I will say, as someone that cares about American football and American soccer and the development of the game, they had something. Uh, both teams had something. I mean, the French team, so young. This new American team we're going to see now, we can care about the U.S. team again now that the World Cup's over. They matter again. Also going to be a young team. But my God, the courage, the tenacity, the collective will um, and uh, 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 of, of that Croatian team, if the U.S. had a fraction of that, we would do great things, a fraction. That's all we need. What do you make of the Croatian coach saying, look, you can't call a penalty like that in a final, in a World Cup final. That can't be a penalty. It wasn't a penalty. They were screwed. You can look, if you want to be a cynic about French glory, and you can hear from my accent, I am a man who is a cynic about French glory. When we sang, it's coming home, football's coming home, we didn't mean it was going to bloody France. So if you want to be cynical about the French win yesterday, they had an own goal, the first ever own goal in a World Cup final in history. They had a video-assisted refereeing decision on that penalty that wasn't a penalty that, that gave them a second goal. They had a deflected goal. But ultimately, it's all a load of bollocks. They deserved it. Um, they, they, were the, they, they rarely... Um, they were so disciplined, they rarely stumbled, and I think, also, I love that. By the way, the one scene I did love was when um, France went 1-0 ahead. Croatia were meant to just wilt in the, in the spotlight of, of, of the occasion, and instead, 10 minutes later, they came back with that wonder goal of their own, where their striker made a move uh, on a French defender, which was so quick, so sharp, he didn't just break his ankles, I think he took the French defender's virginity, and it was an amazing move. And the, the one one in a World Cup final, and that the Croatian manager, an amazing character, didn't even flinch on the sideline, didn't smile, didn't fist pump, just stood there. His whole bench erupted in joy, and he was just like, "Yeah, yeah, we're doing this, we're doing this." He was so in it, and, but obviously quite bullish on Croatia, incredibly bullish on 
on the French victory. And I will say, when I, what, the second the World Cup ends, I don't know if there's anything in American sports that's like this, that's like this for you guys, but for 32 days, the world and America in this world, uh, you know, we, we've immersed ourselves in a one, it's like a Dungeons and Dragons world of characters, heroes, villains, narrative, teams, storylines. And the second the referee blows that final whistle, that whole world just evaporates. It just, it just disappears. And I, I, do, I do believe there'll be thousands of your listeners, Dan, who today are in office cubicles with, with just like missing the World Cup like they never have before at 2 p.m. this yeah. afternoon. And the gambling. Just, and they missed the gambling. And speaking of which, uh, someone who has not yet <laughs> vanished, John calls in. John uh, calling in on the hotline. You're on ESPN Radio with Roger Bennett, Men in Blazers. I mean, damn, what was I supposed to do with that? I'll hang up and listen. What were you supposed to do with what? War torn? Uh, Roger, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Roger, for uh, spending all that time with us. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I'm off to the golf today at Carnoustie to cover the Open on NBCSN, 11 o'clock every night. It's like the methadone that's going to wean me away from the World Cup. Uh, thank you, sir. We appreciate your time. We'll check in with you in a few months. Men in Blazers present Encyclopedia Blazer Tanica. It's available now on the Men in Blazers podcast, available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Thank you, Roger. Support for the Dan Levitard Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Let's talk about buying a home for a minute. Because of rising interest rates, there's a lot of unpredictability when it comes to buying a home these days. It's causing a lot of anxiety and stress for a lot of people. Well, our friends at Quicken Loans are doing something about that. They're calling it the power buying process. Here's how it works. Quicken Loans will verify your income, your assets, and credit in less than 24 hours to give you a verified approval. That gives you the strength of a cash buyer. Then once you're verified, you qualify for their all-new exclusive rate shield approval. This is very cool here. First, they'll lock your rate up for 90 days while you shop. Now, here's the best part. If rates go up, your rates stay the same. But if rates go down, your rate also drops. Either way, you win. It's the kind of thinking you'd expect from America's largest mortgage lender. To get started, simple. Go to rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz. Rate shield approval, only valid on certain 30-year purchase transactions. Additional conditions or exclusions may apply. Based on Quicken Loans data in comparison to public data records, equal housing lender, license in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org number 3030. Don Lebatard. Game day bucket go boom! Stugatz. I do like that idea, Goldie. Of, uh, Goldie. Greedy. I like the idea. I have a friend named Goldie. I called you Goldie. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. It is time to look at the next generation. The MLB All-Star Futures game was yesterday, and the Bats put on a show. Each team hit four homers, but Team USA outslogged Team World to win 10-6, to thanks to Reds prospect Taylor Trammell's solo shot in the six, which gave Team USA a lead they would never relinquish. The next generation is brought to you. <laughs> what happened? Uh, a lead they would never what? Relinquish. I would, someone just tell me. What do you mean? Look at the letters in the in the word. Well, there's a Q in there. Yeah, that's right. Did uh, you, that do you think you pronounced make a G it? Sound? Do you think? I you thought pro- I thought it was a G. What is that word? Relinquish. Oh, what did I say? Relinquish. You made it like a tired. spaghetti dish. I don't know why. I'm tired. Relinquish. Why are you so tired? Vacation. He's worked three days in the last month. Yeah, and I'm taking off Wednesday. Listen, this plane was delayed, man, like four hours. And this new JetBlue uh, terminal. Will you keep reading, please? Please, for the love of God. Nobody wants to hear your complaints about how how hard it is to travel from your, you know, private resorts where, you know, you private. Nobody wants to hear about this. How about you just do your job? I mean, the section I was in was private, but, I mean, for the most part, it's a public resort. Anyone can go there. You can go there. I'll hook you up. The Next Generation is brought to you by the Home Depot. The Next Generation of Home Improvement with everything you need to do projects smarter. The Home Depot. More saving. More doing. Carmelo Anthony is trying to decide between Houston and Miami, and it's such an interesting decision because only one of them is about winning. <laughs> the other one's all about him. <laughs> the other one is all about do you want to end your career at the very end here as the laughing stock 
punchline who, while everyone else is trying to play for championships, you're looking to get closer to sunshine <laughs> and Miami and all the touches that you want for, for a team that'll, you know, build something around you. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, like it's just it's such a funny decision because like Houston was an injury away from the championship last year. You almost can't be closer than that. Right. And so he's choosing between a chance for to play at the championship or in Miami just sort of convincing himself of a bunch of nonsense and the Heat convincing themselves of a bunch of nonsense that would make him a primary player when he's a national laughing stock. It right seems now. like an easy decision. It really does. But I think if you go to the Rockets, there's some pressure there, right? Where you're viewed as the guy that's going to help. I know, but that's why it's an interesting decision because he's just cashing in on early retirement. If he comes into Miami, <laughs> if he, if he comes to Miami, Mello becomes like all of those old people who eventually come from New York to Miami. He's going to get a place in Boca. That's right. <laughs> He's gonna have a no, he's gated gonna, community. He's gonna have a, a vacation cul-de-sac in Boca and retire and also play for the Heat while he's doing it. The Heat know exactly how to play this because he knows in Houston he's not going to be treated like the number one option, no matter how irrational his self confidence. Well, and might be. he can't play the third role, man. The third role has to be willing to be Chris Bosch and get zero points in game seven. Like the third role with Paul George and Russell Westbrook doesn't work. I don't know if it'll work better with Harden. I would think it would work better with Harden and Paul. It really is fascinating. It's, hey, do I want to win a championship or try to show everyone that I could still average 25 points a game on 40 shots? Which he could. <laughs> right. Which he totally could. Yes, he could. The Heat's pitch is sort In a of, hoodie. <laughs> the Heat's pitch is sort of using his lack of self-awareness against him. Oh, yeah, I, I think I'm so good. Yeah, I'm the number one option. Yeah, you can build around me. He's not hearing that from anybody else other than the Miami Heat right now. And it's probably coming at a very welcome time. Is it Woj saying, though, he's leaning Houston? Yeah, which is weird because uh, it, Mike D'Antoni and him, that didn't go well. Never went great. He made Mike D'Antoni quit, according to Mike D'Antoni. Mike D'Antoni felt the need to reveal, you know why I quit my job? People don't quit those jobs. I'm pretty sure, Chris, can you look this up for me? Those are guaranteed contracts. If they fire you, you get all of them. If Mello makes you quit, you're not merely leaving behind the fact that people will pay you. You're choosing to pay for the right to get the hell away from Mello. <laughs> so I'm. I, how much did Mike D'Antoni pay to get away from Mello the last time he enjoyed the Mello experience? Like where in his contract I am was he? To where in his thing. contract was he fired that he quit and says he quit? You get the money if they fire you. If you have to quit, my guess is he might have spent millions of dollars. Mike D'Antoni might have spent millions of dollars to get away from Carmelo Anthony. <laughs> it was his third season of a four-year contract. <laughs> he, he, it might be tens of millions. He might have paid. Let's look this up and figure out if we it's can a get a $24 million <laughs> dollar contract. <laughs> right. he, he Please ten, let it be $16 he paid million. $10 million to get away. Don Lebatard. You are the best. And when I say the best, I mean the very worst and most evil. Stugatz. The worst. But this time, the it's for real. Worst. This is the Don Lebatard show with the Stugatz on ESPN radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guest on the Dan Levitard Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Here's your Sports Center update. The World Tennis Association has ranked Serena Williams 28th in the world, climbing 153 spots. The St. Louis Cardinals fired manager Mike Matheny on Saturday. And finally, Crocs have introduced high heeled shoes. Huh. Hey, just a reminder, if you're doing your deck, if that's one of the things on your to-do list this summer, put new Valspar stain on your shopping list. It's a must-have. That way, you can get all weather protection and more inspiring color, Valspar exterior stain only at Lowe's. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Guillermo, put it on the poll symbolically, if indeed he does sign with the Miami Heat, should Melo play next season wearing socks and sandals? 
Because you're just done. At that point, you're, you're, you're someone from up north who's moved to South Florida because you're done. You don't care about how things look anymore. You're just socks and sandals <laughs> while, while walking on the beach. Because the decision really is for Carmelo Anthony, do, do you want to knock off the best team of this time or do you want to wear socks and sandals in Miami? <laughs> That's what the choice is. Yep. Socks and sandals sound nice. I got to be honest. I don't they? He's going to get paid a lot of money. He'll average 25 a game, zero pressure. Money. He wouldn't be paid that much money. Well, he wouldn't be that well, he's much. Still yeah, he's still getting. But he's right. getting the money. If he actually just retires in Florida, he'd be getting much of that money anyway. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> it, he's coming here. It's man. such a great deal. <laughs> Speaking of symbolism, the way T.O. is not kind of going into the Hall of Fame, but going into the Hall of Fame is exactly how his entire career played out. Just noisy and messy, and yeah, he's great, but like, <laughs> I'm bummed by this. I don't like it. I don't like it. He's proving everybody that had the this animosity towards him and this grudge and tried to prove him a point by keeping him out. He's proven all of them right by pulling this move. Uh, but yep. is he, though? Like, what's the move that you guys are talking about? That, like, you guys Not don't... showing up. But, I mean, okay. Not showing up. I understand he wants to be petty, but he's also taking away something from the people that were supporting him. I'm not going to fly to Chattanooga. I'm sorry. I'm well, not going to do that let for me, you. But let me ask you this question, though. Let's just say... It wouldn't be surprising. This is reckless speculation, but it wouldn't be surprising if T.O. needed money, right? Given some of the endeavors that he's partaken in post career, where you like, you look and you're like, oh, he's on a surreal world. This is just a money grab, right? He's just, these are, are, I'm pretty certain wearing that jacket gets you some money. Like, I'm pretty I, certain. I, well, but what I was going to say. You for all the events no, that you're doing Yes, there. but what I was saying is, does he have something, does, does he have a paid appearance, a party to promote? Does he have something else where he is going to make more money not going to the Hall of Fame and keeping his name in the news? Like, is part of this money related? Or is he simply tired of the way? Because he's not saying, Stugat, the thing that you guys are accusing of him of, which would be valid. It, I understand how people arrive at the perception that T.O. is snubbing or dishonoring the Hall of Fame and furthermore punishing the Hall of Fame because the football writers have always had moral judgments of him. Right. But he's never said that. He's said when when he puts his quotes on things, it's it's an honor and everything, but I have another commitment. I have something else. And people are assuming that he's doing it to snub the Hall of Fame. I haven't heard that in his words. Am I behind the news, Mike? It's a free and open to the public event, his event in Chattanooga. So it's not. it doesn't appear to be a cash grab anyways. And as a Hall of Fame uh, uh, entrant, uh, as a member of that class, there's all sorts of side events that you do in that weekend leading up to the actual event that uh, would be paid appearances. So he's missing out on stuff. But he's not ripping the Hall of Fame. He's simply deciding to not go. Well, not vocally. I mean, he's not saying it with his words. You're well, right, but, but, but his action. But, okay. The action in itself but, nope. is disrespectful. Got, it's made much worse with the words. He's no not, doubt. He's not, he's not doing that. Doesn't that merit anything? Or uh, just, you got, hey, hey, T.O., you got to trot your butt out there to a place that you don't want to go instead of your hometown to have a party with people who have never been your people because right. you've never been of football. When T.O. was playing, Stugatz, I had this conversation with him. T.O., while he was playing, was treating football as a modeling opportunity. He wanted to be a professional model, not a professional football player. The only thing he enjoyed about football was Sundays, and the only part of Sundays that he enjoyed was being in the end zone, <laughs> where he could do all the nonsense that would get him all sorts of attention and validation, and then he'd feud with the media. But it's, that's what this feels like. Like, he's made it to the ultimate end zone, and hey, let's make it that's about right. me. No, yeah. he's, he's made it to the ultimate end zone, and again, at the end, he's symbolically doing it his messy way. Right, but no one's going to watch it now. Right, and selfishly, I'm with Mike. Like He's one of the few guys, Dan, like, I really want to see T.O. go into the Hall of Fame. He has a relationship with the show. I love him. I think he's one of the best wide receivers ever. And I wanted to see a speech. Like, I really wanted to see T.O.'s speech. I was so looking forward to it because that weekend, you know, and it's probably got to go on through midseason of the actual regular season considering who's speaking there. But, yeah, it's the ultimate end zone. I wanted to see his touchdown celebration in front of all the people that tried to prove okay. him a point. Okay, and fair enough. 
uh, accusing T.O. of always thinking of him when saying you wanted to watch his speech, but fair enough. I did say selfish. No, I, I know. I understand. What I'm saying is T.O.'s being selfish. He's not giving me what I want. It's funny. <laughs> the, Look, you make it seem like it's be, it's easy to be a T.O. fan, and it wasn't because I was a T.O. fan when he was the most hated person in sports, and I was always defending him. And for him to do this one last time, I can't really defend it. It's a bummer. It, 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 yeah, everything that you said about him is right. I'm, I'm sick and tired no, no, of trying and to I get, him. I get why you have that feeling, but let's do this another way. Let's do this another way. If you're looking at the actual symbolism of this and what T.O.'s career actually was, it was top three of all time at the position. As great as we've seen, you can make the argument that he was better than Randy Moss if you want to, and we're, we're splitting hairs. Yeah. Like, one of the best to ever do it but never got the kind of credit for it because he didn't win a championship and because he was hard to get along with. He was hard to like in his own locker rooms. He was hard to like outside of his own locker rooms. But as that career grew and as he became more and more excellent, his last 15 years, last 15 years of life, maybe 20 years, have been F you guys. Like, you guys, the, the media, everybody, fans, it's been F you, it's been F you, it's been F you. So, of course, at the end, it's going to be a defiant F you. I don't want to party with you people. Why right. would I want to party my big achievement? Well, I'm going to celebrate it with my hometown. Why do I want to celebrate my big achievement with you people who I've been saying F you to for 15 to 20 years because i I'm tired of football's establishment. I'm tired of football's rules. I'm tired of football's judgments. F you one final time. But how about you share it? Why, first off, why can't the ending be different than the rest? Why can't the ending be something different? Why can't this portion? He's getting in. He's having the party on his terms in his hometown, not their turf. If he wants to do it that way, he earned it, man. He earned it in a way over their disrespect. He earned it by taking it from them because they had to give it to him. They didn't want to give him the Hall of Fame entry into their sacred club, but they had to give it to him because he was that kind of great. I know he's earned it, but I don't have to like it, and I don't like it. Like, it's the Hall of Fame, man. It should be one of the biggest days of your life. Like, go, like, show something. And by the way, there's a ton of other Hall of Famers that are happy that he got in, and he had to out. Dan, he has a ton of fans. I, Dallas, San Francisco, not, Philadelphia is, has a ton of this fans. Is, this is what I'm telling you. Look, I told you LeBron James is better at forgiveness than he is at even basketball because he went back after Dan Gilbert wrote that letter. But I would say that having known Terrell Owens for about 20 years now, like there's an emptiness around the all of him because he is always this hissing, defiant machine that is has a persecution complex, is persecuted, and so at the very end, of course, it would end like this with him just just feeling like he's hissing instead of celebrating. And I I sort of understand it. I get why it is that he would look at these particular people and say, I don't want my big day to be with you. I get it all. And your point about the last 15 years has uh, been a bleep you to everybody else who was yelling bleep him while he was playing. I get all that. But how's that worked out for him? How's it worked out? Oh, terribly. It's terribly. A, it's a terrible energy suck to, to live in that space where you're fighting everyone all the time. Kevin Durant's living it on social media now as an egg. Yeah, he's kind of viewed a little bit like a joke, like a, an immature joke. And this was the one time to bring it back and, and actually use this and actually win at the end and hold your hands up and touch down, celebrate life. And for the people that were supporting him, he took away a great moment. And yeah, I know he's having it around the people that were important to him, but and he's excited to be a Chattanooga mock. I, I, I'm an NFL fan. I was supporting you as an NFL player. I wanted to see that class of Ray Lewis, Randy but Moss, I, and Terrell Owens. I, I but find Dan, you take fascinating. That- I find fascinating that he's saying that was the time when football felt good to him. That dude did not enjoy professional football. Said so at every turn. Yeah, but you have a chance here on a really big stage to say whatever it is you want to say and get off your chest, whatever it is you want to get off your chest. And now you've been stripped of that opportunity because you're being selfish. And I get, look, I understand the arguments you guys are making for how you would do it and what would you would prefer. What I'm telling you is that I understand why T.O. and keeping with exactly I'm not I'm not excusing the behavior. You could judge it all the all you want. I'm explaining the behavior. Of course, at the end, it's going to be a defiant F you because it's been a defiant F you. This is more polite than he did it for the last 15 years. He just said, I'm not coming to your party. I don't. He didn't actually put the words on the defiant F you, which he might have if you'd opened a microphone on him at the Hall of Fame. 
Money, 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 money. Because, because he was crying. This is my quarterback. Like, he can't. He might not even trust himself to make that speech without FUing everybody. But that's what I wanted to see. Of course. I understand <laughs> why you want to see it. I want to see it, too. I understand why he won't give it to you is what I'm saying. <laughs> Don Lebatard. You, got, you can't go we within the same hour on both the Knicks and the Heat. I don't recall anything with the Knicks. You guys? Stugatz. How do you get up and look in a mirror? With half your pa- face painted Knicks colors and half your face painted Heat colors? <laughs> like, how do you get up and look in a mirror? This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. If you missed any of the show, you can listen to all three hours of the Dan Lebatar Show on demand in the ESPN app, plus our Miami-only hour that airs before the show and... Now you can subscribe to our Best of Podcasts. It's all available in the Listen tab of the ESPN app. Surprise a friend or loved one today with a bouquet from 1-800-Flowers.com. When you order a dozen multicolored roses for just twenty nine ninety nine, you'll get another dozen absolutely free. It's a great deal. It's simple to order. Just go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash ESPN. Guillermo, put it on the poll. In terms of understanding, because I'm telling you, I understand what T.O. is doing. I'm not interested in judging the behavior. I just understand it. At Lebetard Show, Guillermo, what do you understand more? T.O. not wanting to go to the Hall of Fame ceremony or or the Hall of Fame pretending T.O. doesn't exist? Because I don't understand the second one more than I don't understand the first. The Hall of Fame, regal creature symbolizing the sacred cathedral that is the violence of men fighting each other At the top of sports, you don't exist. You don't come to our party, you don't exist. We're not even going to mention your name. Come on, dude. Come on. Well, I mean... We're not even going to mention your name? They should pro. I mean, it's pretty petty. I'm with you on that. They should probably mention his name. But but the same way you're saying, I understand why T.O. is doing what he's doing. I kind of understand why the Hall of Fame is doing what they're doing. Well, here's what I would say to you. I understand why T.O. is full of himself. Go ahead and explain to me why the Hall of Fame is. The Hall of Fame. Yeah, but what? It's the final destination. Yeah, T.O., I understand why he thinks his excellence would make him full of himself. The Hall of Fame is just this place in this outpost somewhere. It's not that, just a no, place, it's Dan. Just, it's the Hall of Fame. It's I a mean, destination. Right. You're the place that everybody wants to get to. You ever go to a hot nightclub down here in South Beach? Are they nice to you at the door? They know everybody out there wants to get in there. I know. They don't have to be nice to you. That's right. Everybody wants to be inside me. Yeah. That's what the Hall of Fame says. Exactly. Whoa. I mean, listen, think? some places are just harder to get into, and this is one of the hardest places to get into, and he has gotten access. He's been granted access for life. Doesn't have to wait in line anymore. Just shows up. He walks in. He talks to a couple of busts, and he is, you know, he's not willing to do that. He doesn't want it, and that's weird, considering the guy wanted it really badly for years. My father is. Uh, my father's been saying that the Hall of Fame, they're going to keep escalating this. They're just going to put his bust in the bathroom. I should. Yeah. Guys, too much time. Oh, oh, oh you, you don't have enough time for me, uh, uh, Tara Owens? Bust in the bathroom. How about that? Or even worse, by the water fountain. You can't even look at it. Going, your eyes have to be fixated on the faucet. That Hall of Fame bathroom must be amazing, huh? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, put it on the poll, Grandma. Is the Hall of Fame bathroom amazing, or must the Hall of Fame bathroom be amazing? I guess would be the better question. We're going to do funniest thing of the sports weekend in the next segment, but uh, the V Foundation is doing its annual charity week, and uh, it's part of the ESPYS and. You guys do it really strong on our behalf every year. Now, Guillermo is accusing Mark Cuban of fraud. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> and also, Guillermo has Guillermo has some 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 ideas, and uh, we want to know if we can bid on anything. If we're are we allowed to bid? That's a great as, question. As a show on things that we'd like to do and then ruin. Uh, because we paid for the right to ruin those things or make them better. We're trying to get an answer, but do me a favor. If the answer is yes, we can bid on them. We don't want to tell people what it is. We need we're to zip it up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, I don't know. Yeah. No, 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 we'll but, but can we? But okay, well, that we'll try it. That would be a terrible thing. Well, that, <laughs> I mean, that's yeah, the point that of what we're point. doing, isn't it? Oh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. We're at quite the crossroads if, here. If anyone wants to get into a bidding war on our thing, we can get into a bidding war because I'd pay that much to not hang out with fans of the show. <laughs> That's just an ob- obnoxious joke. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But people do bid a lot of money. eBay.com slash ESPN. 
And, Mike, what's our bid up to now? Because we were running neck and neck with Mark Cuban, and then now Billy's saying that Mark Cuban's bidding on his own thing, and he just put the number in the stratosphere. We were running neck and neck with Cuban, and now we're not anymore. Yeah, Mark Cuban's uh, experience right now is going for $36,600. I mean, to sit next to him at a game and watch Dirk? No, really? that's different. That's He has two different uh, experiences up here, which is also pretty crazy. That one's going for $10,000, the one that Sugat's mentioned. Ours right now is just over over fifteen thousand dollars wow by far number one when it comes to just an espn personality experience we're number one in that regard um but the pitch to mark cuban right that's what you're paying for yeah a pitch lunch with dallas mavericks owner mark cuban we're gonna have in 10 minutes for free a pitch lunch with one of the other sharks right nope we told you he canceled he canceled you just promoted funniest thing from the sports weekend so yeah um so you can, for as of right now, what that for just over $15,000, you can come in the studio, watch exactly how much Dan has lost his marbles. <laughs> when did you guys say that? I didn't hear you say oh, that. Oh, I mean, about two hours ago. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... I said it a couple of times. If I'm because, retaining it. I, mean. yeah, I said it a couple of times because I feared this might happen. Just right. time. Mike, I don't listen to you. Don Libertard. <laughs> Two guts. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stu Gats on ESPN Radio. Hats off to Kylan Mbappé. Oh, man. Mbappé. No. Wow. Killian Mbappé. Killian Mbappé. 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 At 19 years old, he became the first teenager to score in a World Cup final since Pele did it. At 17 in 1958, Killian had four goals total in the tournament, guiding France to their second World Cup championship. This hats off moment is brought to you by T-Mobile. Share your appreciation for our military and veterans by using hashtag hats off for heroes. When you post your photo or video, T-Mobile will donate $1 to Team Rubicon. That's off. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Dan Levitard Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Here's your Sports Center update. The WTA has ranked Serena Williams 28th in the world, climbing 153 spots. The St. Louis Cardinals fired manager Mike Matheny on Saturday, apparently for playoff appearances in six seasons wasn't enough. And finally, four popes have died while having sex. Blink security cameras are one of the hottest Amazon Prime Day deals, up to 40% off a Blink Motion activated video system. That's as low as $69. Visit Amazon.com, search Blink Camera, and score the lowest prices of the year on super smart Blink cameras. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Roger Bennett mentioned uh, Men in Blazers when he was on with us that the World Cup has normalized Russia. Uh, rooting for Putin, the underdog Russian homeland uh, was showcased throughout this. And Conor McGregor has gone to, is it Instagram, Mike? Uh, Instagram showing a picture of himself and Putin and really speaking more glowingly about Putin than he ever speaks about anyone publicly on anything. And so if you watch HBO Real Sports and some of the uh, – it just – staggering corruptions that were around this World Cup and maybe even death. Well, no, definitely death, maybe even murder, where you know journalists or people who are activists are, are just dying in mysterious fashions. Um, like that, That's what we just witnessed. Uh, France, we can celebrate France if you want to today, but we just witnessed a real rooting for Putin normalizing of Russia here, uh, now led by Conor McGregor, the ultimate bad boy, endorsing the uh, the, the Russian leader. Yeah, on his Instagram, he uh, calls Putin uh, one of the greatest leaders of our time and that he was honored to attend such a landmark event alongside him. Um, so let's go ahead and do funniest thing from the sports week and let's segue. That might be up not it. I, mean. I mean, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Let's, uh, let's do funnier things from the sports weekend. Hey, people. Tell us what in the sport made you laugh hardest this weekend. 
in this segment we call What Make You Laugh This Weekend. Ha ha ha! Funniest thing from the sports weekend brought to you by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Chris, what was the funniest thing from the sports weekend? Tom Brady going ham in a dodgeball game with his family. <laughs> was it? He yeah. Went, he went he crazy? A, I'm pretty yeah. sure he hit a child in the face. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was Adam Sandler, Billy Madison like. Really? It's yeah. as fast as I've ever yeah. seen him move. It was great. Really? Yeah. He was just so the competitive juices started flowing and he hit a kid in the face with the ball. Yes. All right. Uh, Billy, what do you got? Locally down here in Miami, there was this uh, county commission meeting for a new soccer stadium, and Greg Cody was, you know, doing his job. He was there covering it. So one of the local news stations wanted to interview Greg Cody to talk about it since he was there. And while playing back the package of the interview with Greg Cody, he was cut off in the middle of talking. <laughs> so the, they they hard networked out Greg Cody on the on the local news. Hundred percent. Okay, it's becoming a thing in the middle of it's becoming <laughs> a thing. Roy, what do you got? What was the funniest thing from the sports weekend during the World Cup trophy presentation? There was a rainstorm, and Vladimir Putin was the only person with an umbrella. <laughs> also, someone swiped a medal. Yeah. It would appear <laughs> it's a whole mystery. You could slow it down. Somebody there just put one in a pocketbook and moved on. Really? Yeah. How'd he play? <laughs> uh, Mike, what was the funniest thing from the sports weekend? Technically not from the weekend, but I discovered it over the weekend, so it's going to count because it's funny. Yes. Uh, Bartolo Colon has been in the league so long that when he pitched uh, at Fenway on Wednesday night, the Red Sox coaching staff had more plate appearances against him than the players on the roster. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Who were the coaches on the staff? Who were they? Yeah, uh, Alex Cora is one of them. 63 uh, plate appearances for the Red Sox coaching staff were 62 players on the active That's roster. A played appearance against Bartolo. What do you got, guys? What was the funniest thing from the sports week? It's it's funny and it's gross. It's Nadal picking his wedgies during the Wimbledon final, but a couple of times, Dan. I know people saw this. Not only did he pick the wedgie, he smelled his fingers afterwards. I mean, listen, I'm guilty. I've done it. I don't do it on national TV while playing in the finals of the greatest tennis major in the history of the game, in the history of the sport. This guy is picking his wedgie and then smelling his fingers afterwards. Disgusting. Stop doing it. Uh, in LeVar Ball's league, one of the coaches in the league squared up on one of his own players and told him to stop being a bleep, which is exactly how I imagine... I thought that that was happening during every timeout in Lavar Ball's league. Like just, and and basketball would be a lot more interesting if uh, if you just allowed Lavar Ball's coaches to behave the way Lavar Ball does. Everyone's done with Lavar Ball, huh? Yeah. Are you looking forward to Sasha Baron Cohen's movie? Uh, very much. It's yes. Not a movie. It's, it's, a, movie. it's, a, it's, a, movie. it's a television show. Yeah, and it premiered. Already, yeah. yeah, it premiered this weekend yeah. actually. Yeah. yeah, close though. Good try. How was it? I actually haven't seen it yet, yeah. but I, I've heard funny things about it. Yeah. So it debuted where? Showtime. Yesterday. Yesterday. Okay. Yeah. Well, sorry, I'm a little behind. Forgive me, guys. <laughs> you the world's moving really fast, and you guys are really well. You're, you guys are Have way you out ahead. Have completely disconnected from the internet again? Uh, a lot. Yeah. On? It's very nice. Have you disconnected from the articles that I send you on via text? Um, I saw that video that you sent me of Sasha Baron Cohen. I didn't know you the don't show listen was to yesterday. my text either. No, no. I didn't know the show was yesterday. I'm sorry. The show, for those of you who don't know, is on Showtime. It's Sasha Baron Cohen. It's like the Ali G show. He has four new characters, and I think it's called What is America, where he's going around, you know, pranking people in costume again. I believe it's called Who is America. One of the characters looks like Blake Griffin. Um, well, one of the things that's great about this is that he got... This guy, I, I don't know how many of you remember him as Ali G, but that was my introduction to Sasha Baron Cohen. And, and Will Ferrell's turning 51 today, okay? So this is a, a generation of comedy has gone through these guys. And the way that he made himself famous through Britain is at a time that nobody was doing this. He was doing characters and caricatures before Colbert, before any of them. He was doing people, uh, he was skewering self-serious people and people in politics. And so Sarah Palin recently was really bothered publicly. It was great publicity for his show, really bothered by being pranked by him. And I was glad to see 
that he was pranking on both sides, that he was going after both so it can't be enough. He likes skewering self-serious politicians, and he does it very well. I don't know that anyone has ever done it better, because the way he did it as Ali G, he was a comically ignorant character, not unlike Stugatz, and he was in disguise being comically ignorant with people who would then get bothered by his comic ignorance <laughs> and bothered in a very, like, I, I remember Andy Rooney just being in that awful office and just, that one felt mean. That one, because Andy, Re, Andy Rooney was so old at that point and cantankerous that Ali G being in hip hop character performing, um, felt like taking advantage of old people. But my guess is this is what he's going to do now too, right? This is what he's doing with this TV show that he's been around long enough. What happened with Ali G is he couldn't do it anymore because he wasn't fooling anybody because his character became too known and became too popular. But he's been around long enough that he can come back now as another character. Yeah, and he in in the states, Ali G didn't necessarily work all that well, but Borat did, and Borat came at a time where it was post nine eleven and it sort of like shined an ugly light on uh, post nine eleven Islamophobia. Bruno, I think as a nation weren't quite there yet, wasn't received the same way as uh, as Borat. But now he's got all these other characters. It reminds me of the time the Ali G show was brilliant. Remember that time he interviewed Buzz Aldrin and he just kept calling him Buzz Lightyear? Yes. <laughs> yes. You can't. You, can you get. Well, we can't get that sound cleared, but I'd love to show people what it is that this guy was doing because it, for some reason it didn't work in the States. And I didn't understand why it didn't work in the States because it was clever, layered comedy. And now he's going back to his. His roots, because Borat was really one of only many characters and not the best one. It's just the one that caught in this get in this country. Um, and so I'm curious what the hell he's going to do. I mean, he, he, he did flamboyantly gay hairdresser. That, uh, that was funny. Like he, he, he rubs up his bumper car causes sparks rubbing up against the line. It seems like, uh, what he's doing is playing the hits. And that's smart. Just well, keep playing I, the no, hits. But I, no, but I don't. This is a, this is not a, these are new characters. The exact I'm opposite guessing. of what he's doing. The, yeah. Playing the hits would be bringing back Ali G, Borat, and Bruno. Well, his strength he, is. Yeah, he's, his strength. To his strength. Okay. He's playing to his I can't wait he's to see this movie. No, you're pleased. Really? You're going to turn that around on me? Oh, wow. no, that's not you're, what I was wow, doing. Wow, you put that back on I swear, me. That's not really? What I was doing. Really? <laughs> that's not. I owe you money. Don Lebatard. Dan has it. Oh, my God, no, this, this is a Bomani question. Mavis Staples, go. Stugatz. You can't hold papers together without some Mavis Staples. I mean, everyone knows that. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. Before you hit the road for any vacation this summer, visit GNC. You need to stay healthy, and GNC has the highest quality solutions and supplements in the industry. GNC brand products pass up to 150 quality checks. You can be sure you're getting the best prices with GNC's price match guarantee. GNC doesn't just match prices. They'll beat them by a buck or try something new. If it's not right for you, return it for a full refund. You heard me right, a full refund. This summer, live well with GNC. Exclusions apply. See an associate or GNC.com for details. We're going to update the polls in a second here. And, Mike, I am on the cusp here. I am on the cusp of going to war with sales, okay? I am, I'm getting ready to nuke sales for a variety of different things that have been happening around here. Uh, but one of them, and I just want to see if I have this right, because this one's funny if they were doing it on purpose, but my guess is that they probably weren't, which makes it less funny. Do we have Stugatz doing advertising for one thing and then two hours later saying don't advertise for that thing? In their defense, I, I can't say that it's never happened. I know what you're thinking. And I can tell you right now, it's not happening. Okay. okay. Because that's how it sounded to a lot of people on air. It sounded like, uh, it sounded to a lot of people on air. Like that's what we're doing around here, which is sort of perfect for Stugatz. Just, uh, I'd be happy to do it. I mean, I'm fine <laughs> with it. Totally. It's something that you did regularly when the uh, 790, the ticket first started. Yep. You would, yeah. you, you would do a live read for one automobile manufacturer or dealership and the very next voice was a recorded spot because the commercials were back then were just all Sugats recording spots for another dealership. You're supposed to like have some sort of buffer there, man. Like, yeah. geez, 
Yeah. It was just, just Stugatz no. nonstop, yeah. nonstop Stugatz doing uh, advertisements for everybody. I want to tell you about my favorite car, so and so dealership, best dealership. My favorite was the Dove Healer, though. Oh, I love that my thing. Favorite the Dove, oh, they was, paid there me was so some, much You money. put something on your wrist and it heals you. Yep, that's it. I mean, you turn that's it on, it. you charge it. That's it. Overnight. And then you turn it on and you put it on anything, you know, on your body that's hurting. You Radi- just put the Dove Healer there and voila. Radio is disgusting. Voila, radio is disgusting. Yeah. At Levitard Show. Um, I mean, local radio is the best, though, man. It was like the wild, wild west. Mike is right. I was endorsing 17 different car dealerships in town. No, we won't even talk about something. Uh, you, were, you were endorsing for a while there something that would clean up your nether regions by simply a spritz. So it wouldn't actually clean up your nether regions. Oh, new bag. Yeah. You remember that sack of the week feature? Do you remember that? Yes, I do. Yeah, guy got a sack. You a sack of the week. New bag, sack. Football. So right. So just to be Something clear, JJ Watts not familiar. For, with. for those of you who do not know, for those of you who do not know, um, again, just if, if <laughs> your nether regions, you could just bathe. <laughs> no, that's one of that's the options. Not easy you enough. could just shower. But if you're in too much of a hurry, just spritz this eucalyptus. This eucalyptus. This I spritz, still have some. Just, it, you know, you don't have time for you know Euc- hygiene. So just spritz this down there, and it'll clean you up. On the go after a pickup basketball game, new bag. <laughs> <laughs> At Levitar Show on Twitter, let's recap today's polls, Stugatz. The Twitter poll is brought to you by Discover Card, who will match all the cash back new card members earn at the end of their first year. That's amazing. They're going to match all the cash back new card members earn at the end of their first year. Learn more at discover.com slash match. Limitations apply. At Levitar Show on Twitter, do you high five strangers when something good happens for your team at a sporting event? Mike, 80% of the audience said yes. Sports is alive in this country. (laughs) Is your team being in the World Series fun? Let's see. Billy asked that question in the local hour. No, it was Was me again. Uh, It was you. 82% of the audience said yes. Sports is alive in this country. (laughs) Do you have trouble summoning happiness for the French? 73% of the audience said yes. Sports is alive in this country. (laughs) Do you know the royal family's last name? Okay, well, yeah, we don't talk sports all the time. Eighty-four percent of the audience said no. How about that, Guillermo? Eighty-four percent. Are you sad that there's only one remaining blockbuster? Fifty-five percent of the audience said yes. Are you terrified of running over those spikes when returning a rental car? Who's not terrified of that? Twenty-two percent of the audience. Oh, get out of here, liars! <laughs> liars and frauds, all of you. <laughs> Symbolically, if Carmelo signs with the Miami Heat, should he play in socks and sandals? <laughs> That's great, right? <laughs> Funny question. I mean, he should. Why not? Just beach go- should play with one of those metal detectors looking for <laughs> coin in the sand. 94% of the audience said yes. What do you understand more? T.O. not wanting to go to the Hall of Fame ceremony or, or the Hall of Fame pretending T.O. doesn't exist? <laughs> Sixty-seven percent of the audience said "T.O." Sports is alive in this country. Must the Hall of Fame bathroom be amazing? Eighty-five percent of the audience said and yes. It must be right. It must be yes. like the gates of heaven. The gates right in front of the gates of heaven before you go into heaven. If you need to stop real quick, you could do so at the Hall of Fame. Bathroom. 